Hi there, I'm David Wexler. Welcome to my talk on electroculture, magnetic culture, and beyond. To start things off, I'd like to say that farmers worldwide are struggling to survive against erratic weather conditions like long heat waves, early frosts, decimating crops before they can be ready for harvest. These are real people that are affected every year by these trends. Another issue is that there are a ton of growers who have issues with growing for their basic food needs, let alone having enough to make extra money to support their families. Normal growers too, both commercial and hobbyist growers, also run into these issues. What if there were a series of ways that growers worldwide from all walks of life could drastically change the way that they grow food? What if there were a series of techniques that leveraged the knowledge of the ancients along with the use of modern, do-it-yourself, scalable technologies that could help with overcoming most of these calamities? These techniques are here now, available in a way to help everyone with not only food security, but that can also give them the ability to thrive to, in their gardens, in their livelihoods, and their own personal health and well-being. Let me start at the beginning. Ever since I was a little kid, I was fascinated with electricity. It all started with my dad buying me a miniature Van de Graaff generator, which for me led to lots of fun with sparks, corona discharges, ionization, and so on. Later, after getting my engineering degree, intuition took me on the path of pursuing classes in Tai Chi, which evoked a very strong sense of curiosity about this chi thing that was going on. I didn't understand it. Now, while at first I didn't believe in this idea of invisible energetic force, a year later, I felt it for the first time while taking a class on Qigong and it literally blew me away. To feel this powerful buzzing energy ball moving inside my body in accordance with my thoughts and my body movements. I learned to not only feel it, but to also project it to friends whom I would teach how to experience it for themselves. And we would experiment with moving these invisible energies back and forth between each other. This was a really fun exploratory time for me as I loved cultivating and developing this amazing invisible force, using it for diagnostics as well as healing, using it to heal myself and my friends. I also began experimenting with some readily available energy-based technologies. One such device was inspired by Reich's concept of orgone. Reich believed that alternating layers of metallic and non-metallic substances could concentrate this naturally occurring energy for healing purposes. So from a catalog, I purchased a device called the Beamer, also known as an orgone shooter. I was drawn to its simplicity as it was really a rolled up orgone accumulator. What fascinated me was that this device emitted an energy beam that I could physically feel in my hands. I thought it was also interesting that the feeling of it was closely related to the feeling of chi that I projected from one hand to the other through my focused intention. Later on, inspired by my wife and our community of friends, I found myself getting into gardening and permaculture. I loved growing plants, getting food from the garden, but then it got me thinking. How can I make gardening something of my own, something that resonated with all of me, with all of my interests? At the time, I did not think it was possible, yet it was something that I pondered about. And eventually, my interest led me to thinking, what would happen if I could add some chi or even some electricity to my plants? And then I recalled that back in high school, while working on a high voltage based science fair project, I came across a series of papers on this old world topic called electroculture. that had some really interesting pictures and drawings associated with it, with ginormous plants. And while I thought it was interesting at the time, I shelved it. 20 years later, after developing some gardening chops, I came across these old papers again and decided to do my first experiment. At the time, we were growing some plants in the basement in preparation for spring. A number of different varieties along with some Romanesco broccoli. So after prepping all of our normal control group plants, I added a few seeds to a separate growing container along with a thrown together electroculture setup consisting of a DC power supply and some nails as electrodes. I placed the nails on either side of the growing pot and waited to see what happened. About two weeks into it, the effects became strongly apparent. As you could see here, 
The electrified group on the right had larger, more developed leaves, and they were also much greener than the control group ones on the left that were pale green in color. As time went on, it became clear that these plants were accelerating in their growth. About one month later, you can see the electrified ones towering over the ones in the foreground. At this point, before we transplanted them in the ground, I was going nuts. I was completely surprised at what was going on here. And I started telling all my friends and my neighbors and everyone about it. It blew me away and it set me off on a journey covering more than a decade so far. So what are the effects that one can expect from electroculture? There are many. Here are a few. Changes in leaf and stem pigmentation, improve light absorption, sugar, and energy production. Here you could see on the right, these electrified pepper plant roots have a denser root structure. Another effect is that the plant's metabolism moves into high gear, it's like they're on steroids, speeding up their respiration rate, and thus the root system's uptake capabilities. I did many experiments on lettuce seeds. In this ad hoc test using a solar panel, with everything else planted the same, the results speak for themselves. You could see not only much better germination, but faster growth as well. Plants also become much more flavorful and nutrient dense. I even recently heard about a Michelin chef who is now growing their vegetables with electroculture for this very reason. It protects various crops from insects, mold, rust, and even fungal infections. For many growers, this is a significant expense. For instance, I know someone who spends $1,500 a month on fungicide spraying. He could realize a ton of savings from implementing electroculture on his land. It could also help with inducing a healing response as well. As an example, we had a peach tree that has never borne fruit in over five years since transplant. It ended up becoming quite diseased, and the fruit would always drop very early, never making it to maturity. One fall, as a test, I decided to apply DC electroculture upon this tree. And the following spring and summer, we had our first full tree's worth of delicious fruit. There are also increases in yield in different ways, either in quantity or by weight. Here's an example. A colleague of mine in Mississippi, using a prototype system I developed, achieved a 50% increase in tomato yields, 24% by weight, or a three to four week earlier harvest, depending upon the variety, determinant or indeterminate. Now here's an experiment I did on some basil plants with an early prototype that utilized different electrical frequencies on the left, which greatly outperformed the, all of the others. In addition to testing out different frequencies, I also had an earth battery, which is simply a battery made of a plate of copper and zinc connected with a wire on top, and a control group on the right-hand side. One of the things I learned from all of this experimentation was that frequency plays a big role in the effects that could be realized. Here's a simple bench top test on some cherry tomatoes using an early prototype of mine back in 2016. One of the things I found that I like is testing many different techniques at the same time. While I realized I'd need to eventually move to doing experiments on larger amounts of samples, this type of testing tends to show which approaches have the greatest promise across a wide number of different stimulation ideas. In this case, the best results came from pulsed DC stimulation. I also learned that not all approaches give the same results. As you can see, most of the other approaches listed here didn't fare or perform so well. There are a number of variables for each given type, so there's a lot of variability to play with. Another system of mine that was installed on a soybean crop on conservation land resulted in larger, fuller plants and larger seeds as well. This could be very, very beneficial for large-scale agriculture. I also experimented a lot with lots of different ways of applying electric fields to the ground with both linear and radial electric fields. In this picture, you can see that the plant size goes down in relation to the distance from the positive electrode. I find the approach of using DC to be very, very interesting because you could cover large areas with a minimal amount of equipment. I've also done some high voltage testing as well which was an approach that was really popular at the turn of the last century. And the results I achieved were very often similar to those that you see here. As you've seen so far, there are a number of techniques, most of which I haven't even touched on. There are just too many to cover here in this short time period. And as you can see, there are a lot of promising results that can vary a lot based on the crop type, type of stimulation, and lots of and lots of other factors. 
The biggest lesson I learned is that different plants prefer different types of stimulation. And there are so many variables from per plant variations at the species level or the genetic level to preferences from the stimulation side, like frequency, current, stimulation dosage, and so on. I've also done a lot of tinkering using magnetic fields. For instance, here's a flagship example from Russian scientist George Lakovsky, where he exposed all of the above plants to cancer, yet the one only one that survived was surrounded by a single self-resonant coil that caused an electromagnetic inductive field to flow into the plant body, preventing it from not only getting the disease, but also causing it to thrive as well. I've done some of my own experiments using Lakovsky coils and had achieved many similar results on my own the most notable of which was on an apple tree that unfortunately never bore fruit as it was planted next to a black walnut tree. I wish I knew about that sort of thing at the time. The release of juglone, a toxic chemical that gets released from the black walnut tree, comes into contact with my apple tree and any other plants that are in its way and prevents them from growing properly. So my apple tree ended up getting diseased and it never really grew. So one winter, I hooked up a special type of Lakovsky coil, a variant called a Moody coil, and I chose it by dowsing for it. So knowing that there's many parameters that come to the creation of these Lakovsky coils, in fact, the Lakovsky coils itself has a very specific diameter and overlap for the coil. In this case, I chose the Moody coil and there are lots of different construction parameters that you could choose from the size of the coil to the spacing between the ends. And what I decided to do was douse for those parameters. And it was really cool because in the end, the device worked exactly as it intended because we ended up with a tree full of apples that next fall. So now I'd like to introduce you to a greater world that's filled with all sorts of magic and experiences that are consciousness and invisible energies. So if you recall, long ago I learned that you could physically transmit energies to others and they could feel. And later I learned that there were even devices available that could be used to generate similar effects. So this got me thinking, can subtle energy fields affect the growth of plants? Fast forward, I eventually came across some research from James DeMeo who was using plants to validate some of the research from Dr. Reich. And I was really, really pleased to see the results that he came up with, where he was able to show that plants do, in fact, respond to these invisible energies, these invisible orgone energies, in a very beneficial way. Since orgone shooters work on plants, then projected chi should also work, right? So over the years, I heard stories of people performing all sorts of experiments and research from all over the world, from the US to Mexico to India and beyond. And growers were achieving all sorts of amazing results using, using chi, using the influence of their minds and their projected biofields upon their crops. And I thought it was super cool that over the last 10 years, since I started on this endeavor, the amount of research in this area has been steadily increasing more and more. As you can see here, this is a very tiny, small sampling of papers that I came across just doing a quick check. But when I first started, there was almost nothing. So this led me to more expansive thoughts. It got me thinking, can our consciousness in a general sense affect plant growth too? As an example, on the positive side, my business partner and friend, Ray Lee Bacon, has been a commercial microgreen grower for over 10 years. And in getting to know each other, he shared with me a couple of stories where despite being situated on poor quality soil and being grown in a much colder microclimate compared to the most of the crops that he's used to growing his plants in, he had amazing success leveraging conscious intent, dowsing for the site selection and magnetoculture, in particular using paramagnetic materials, to create a large garden that produced fast growing plants that were enormous in size with a lot less pest and disease compared to all of the other plants and gardens that he's normally tended to. But interestingly, there's a negative side to all of this consciousness stuff too. 
With some of his gardening ventures, Ray discovered that when he was in a mental funk or depressed, that his farm outputs seemed to correlate. For instance, in our April podcast, he shared in detail how it seems that he killed a large cedar tree in his yard, in his, next to his garden, through the projection of intense thoughts and emotions and intent around a tree that he wanted to die. Now, this isn't for any random reason, but this tree was placed in a part of the yard that was interfering with the running of his greenhouse operation, and it was interfering with his livelihood. Within two months, Without doing anything to it, the tree died. It simply dried up and died. As for myself, I run into similar issues. I've experimented on tons of plants over the last 10 years. And when I got into my own depression for more than a year, I found that almost all of my experiments stopped responding in a positive way. Despite doing regression tests using the exact same equipment and soil conditions as before, which made things worse, of course. I firmly believe that our thought processes and our intention affects our bodies, affects everything around us, positively and negatively. In summary, I'm a huge fan and enthusiast for this amazing world of electroculture and energetic agriculture that encompasses so many different types of energy and likewise overlaps with a very wide interdisciplinary mix of fields. From the hard science of electroculture and magnetoculture to the fringes of subtle energies and the effect of consciousness on plant growth. What I love about this field is that there's no bias with plants. You can apply energies to them, and if they respond, well, you're doing something right. Now, there's lots of variations you gotta have to experiment with. So, working with plants proves to me that there is a true magic that's available in our lives to manipulate and to use. And it's amazing to me that not only are there amazing tools and methods to improve the growth of our plants, but we can also do it ourselves with just our plain consciousness and mindset. I love knowing that these technologies exist for helping the everyday farmers to those who are struggling to survive. And all it requires is learning some new techniques, opening up your mind, expanding to a whole new world of energies, and we, our farms, and our gardens can all be better for it. Thank you so much.